the video waveform generator is a classic all analog oscillator design with a triangle core, several wave shapers to get five different waveform outputs simultaneously. It also has a very stable synchronization circuit and a very wide frequency range. It has six different frequency ranges from uh, many seconds all the way up to 3.2 megahertz. You have triangle, sawtooth, square, pulse wave, and sine wave outputs. The square wave is at half the frequency of the other outputs, so you can do some interesting tricks with that. You also have synchronization input, two frequency modulation inputs, pulse width modulation input, sine shape modulation input. All of these inputs for modulation have an attenuating level control, which means the input signal is inverted when the knob is turned to the left and is positive when the knob is turned to the right. Now I'm going to demonstrate some of these modulation inputs um, while we listen to the oscillator and see it at the same time. We're going to use the oscillator in audio range. We're listening to the sine wave right now. Now I'm going to molt this signal so it's going to the speaker and to the color video encoder at the same time. So you can see we're viewing and hearing the oscillator at the same time. Now the reason you see the oscillator scrolling up or down has to do with the video synchronization speeds and um, that the oscillator is running asynchronous to the video clock. The closer we get to a multiple of the frame rate, the slower these lines will appear to move. As we get higher and closer to more multiples of the frame rate, you can see you see more lines. So that's an important observation to make is that you're going to see more lines with higher frequencies. So you can hear and see what the sine shape is doing right there. There's the pulse wave. It goes all the way from 0 to 100. Square wave. Sawtooth. And triangle. So now we can take this second oscillator apply some frequency modulation. Frequency modulation can add or subtract to the current frequency. Wave shape modulation is going to visually appear very different. Whereas frequency modulation was changing the number of lines we were seeing across the display, uh, wave shape modulation or pulse width modulation is going to be changing the shape of the waveform. Now we could be controlling these at LFO speeds like this. Sign shape works similarly to pulse width modulation. Now the main thing that makes this oscillator special is its ability to sync to video synchronization rates. If we flip our sync bus switch um, upward, we're locking that video to the frame rate. 
This means that, that for every frame, the video resets, and that makes it appear to be a stable pattern rather than one which is scrolling like we were seeing before. So now if we change the frequency, the pattern's still gonna stay still. Now if we wanna create horizontal lines, we have to go to a much higher frequency. I'm gonna make the oscillator unsynced so you can visually see and hear the point at which we're above the audio range. You can see as the oscillator gets pretty close to the line rate, then we're getting some A-stable things happening here, some really interesting texture. Once you get up far enough, you can sync to the horizontal intervals. Now the oscillator is running much faster, and as a result, it's synchronizing every video line. So that creates vertical bars. Whereas within the audio range, um, we would be seeing smoothly scrolling information here. This frequency is so fast that we're not going to see the same equivalent of that in a stable way until we synchronize it to video sync. Now going all the way up. Here we're over three megahertz. Now if we take this um, first, this uh, other oscillator here and put that into our audio range. our much faster horizontally locked oscillator and frequency modulate that, you see where you can change the shape of the faster oscillator along a different axis. So this oscillator is controlling the brightness of the video, and this oscillator is controlling the shape of the other oscillator. Now we could also control the sign shape along another axis. So these two techniques, frequency modulation and wave shape modulation, are the foundation of many video synthesis techniques. Having two different oscillators is important so that you can have one running at the audio speeds and another running at the video speeds in order to get shapes that change across the display. Things get infinitely more complex as we add more oscillators and patch more inputs into each other and of course start mixing in color. Here's one last trick to show you with Video Waveform Generator before we're done for the day. We're gonna lock this oscillator to video field. See, we have several waveform repetitions here. Now, before I mention that the square wave output is at half the frequency of the, of the other outputs, if we frequency modulate the oscillator by its, by its square wave output, we can change the width of every other waveform. This can introduce some very interesting complexity um, and can be further expanded by sending the oscillator different clock division outputs. Here's what it looks like controlling the sign shape.